Shaka, how do you explain that first half performance being so flat, given, you know, you get a nice win against Newcastle, draw against Chelsea, obviously beat PSG, beat Leipzig, it's momentum going. And yet they go out there yeah, well, and, and there's just there's just nothing, no spark against Arsenal. Yeah, to, to your question, Dan, I'm not sure how, how you explain that. As a team, you, you would think that Manchester United respond to that result, um, given how poor they've been so far this season, uh, and then build on, on that result against RB Leipzig and, 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 and push on and, and, and start to challenge as, as, as they would expect, expect to. How you go from that to this, uh, and it's not about big games as we'd seen against PSG and RB Leipzig because ag against Arsenal, another team you'd expect to be in the top six, you, you have all the motivation you need to be, to be at your absolute best. The only thing I can see is that whenever, Man whenever Ole Gunnar Solskjaer needed, needed a result, somehow Manchester United found it. Whether it was against PSG a couple of seasons ago, which earned Ole Gunnar Solskjaer the job full-time, or to the second half of the season, we saw last season with Bruno Fernandes coming in and they, they finished top three, and that <laughs> kept uh, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer in, in the job. Uh, and now this, uh, other than that, I, 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 don't, I can't figure out a pattern to, to Manchester United and the roller coaster of their performances and results. Dan, Dan, you talk about momentum, but that's that sort of cup competition momentum. I touched on it in midweek where, uh, you know, they're, they're almost a better cup side in terms of the way that they set up. But when you talk about momentum, that's now uh, six league games in and three losses, 50% of the games. And even worse than that, four of those league games were at home. Mm. And that's three losses and one draw mm. and a poor game against Chelsea at home, and, and the two victories, by the way, one of which was damn lucky uh, at Brighton, have been against two sides that we expect to be in the bottom half of the league and, and arguably fighting against relegation. So th this, this is a huge concern. There, are, there is the odd flurry of performance, of good result, but generally United get outplayed, right? And they're reliant on the front boys. We touched it in midweek. They're reliant on the big boys to come up with the goods. Well, that's not happening too often domestically because they're getting bossed in the middle of the park and the manager sits there and doesn't do a whole lot about it. Now, it's, it's partly him to blame and it's partly the players to blame. Nobody's going unscathed here. But let me tell you, that if he's sending them out there in, in a game against a, a fragile Arsenal side and says, listen, sit back and let Arsenal play and pass it around, then he's in the wrong job. He's in the wrong job because he should have got in their faces and said, listen, they're playing me a back three, they got injuries, there's no David Luiz, let's go and press them because they'll try and play out from the back and they'll go back to Leno and they'll make mistakes and then we can squeeze them up the field and we control the game. None of that. Absolutely clueless. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.